good afternoon. Today we have an online presentation of the results of the Sociological Research Belarusian Initiative, Chatham House. Our speaker is Rigor Astapenia, who is director of the above mentioned initiative. Hello, Rigor. Hello. Let me remind you that we are recording the discussion. The recording will be available later on the Press Club channel on YouTube, by the way. You feel free to subscribe to us push all the buttons in order not to uh, miss our videos. We have interpretation in English. If it's much easier for you to listen to us in English, choose the Zoom channel. Uh, well, if you listen to the Russian channel, you will hear everything in Russian. If English is your level, language of choice, you will hear in English. Please ask your questions in the chat or raise your hand if you want to ask a question using your voice. We have a, we'll have a Q&A as well. Erhard, please. Thank you very much. And thank you, Press Club, for organizing this event. It's, I'm happy to see so many people with us. I will share with you my presentation in a second. I'll say a few introductory words as well. I hope everyone can see me. Just like Anton said, today we'll be represented in a new sociological survey. Well, we made a survey from 20 to 30th April 2020. Here was about me. My name is Igor Astapenia. I'm director of the Belgian Initiative at the Royal International Relations Institute called Chatham House. I also a research director. At the, I'm a PhD and a I'm a politologist. That's a few words for me. Now we have a presentation of the data. You probably have seen that the data has been published. There will be in the Chatham House website. I uh, put in the chat the file and links to the presentation in Russian, in English. There is also a presentation for Chatham House. I also put the two links for, for the all the data of the respondents' answers. Also, in many ways, the idea, uh, and I'll be happy that you uh, get uh, give us some feedback about the next research, because we are quite transparent. If you are interested in things that interest you and that you would like to know about the Builder Society, we'll be happy to put to include these questions in the next poll. Now, a few words about the methodology. I'll be brief, but well, I do have to touch upon it. We actually served 937 respondents between 20th and 30th of April 2021. It corresponds to the general structure of Belarusians, Belarusians urban population in terms of gender, age, and size of respondents' town. The previous waves were not corrected for the educational level, and this one was not. Also, we're conducting this poll through the internet, through using Skype, computer accepted, assisted web interview, which actually means that we are working with the internet users. So consequently, we're working with the urban population because it's in the urban area, we don't have any internet access. And in, everyone is using the internet, almost everyone. Although in the, while in the rural area, the number of people having online access is lower. Also, we need to understand that, and we've uh, mentioned this before, that some voters or people who are people who voted for Lukashenko are less uh, socially and economically active. We believe this could also affect our poll. 
So this probably means that uh, our, res our research uh, results are a couple of percent worse than for Alexander Lukashenko than they could have been. The last point, we publish uh, re replies of all the respondents using the Excel file and others and so-called sub file used by sociologists while processing big chunks of data. We're doing this for our data to be as transparent as possible so that every person would be able to sit down and uh, browse the results so that Mr. Muka Woschik uh, a pro-governmental writer or a, a journalist could write an article. So the first part of our poll is about electoral preferences. The first question that we're asking is, which of these people do you know you're familiar with? This is an introductory question. We see that up to Alexander Lukashenko, who, who is known by everyone, the, is followed by the protest leaders, Tikhanovsky, Babarika, Tikhanovsky, Tsapkala, Kolesnikov, and Latushka. What's interesting here, we see that the state officials we believe uh, they scientists and researchers, journalists, we believe they're an important part of the system. Like Natalia um, Kachanova, Yuri Karayev, Vladimir Makey. But in fact, they're not known by many people. More than half, but at least one third of people don't know who this person is or what they do. Also interesting is the question, uh, in fact, not many people know uh, who the prime minister is, the current prime minister is. We asked a question about Mikhail Mistikovic, Sergei Rumas, Stankiev, uh, Rumas, uh, Mackey. It turns out that Mikhailai, Mikhailai, Mikhail Mistikovic is known by 50% by uh, of uh, urban dwellers. And third point is Roman Galochenko, who has been for over a year, the prime minister of Belarus, and only 27 people know what, who he is and what he does. I will sometimes say Belarusians and um, urban dwellers, but uh, I will always mean urban dwellers. Next question. Which of the people on this list do you believe would make a good president of Belarus? We'll give people three options here. Out of 20 people, Viktor Babarika is in the lead, followed by Alexander Lukashenko, and then Pavel Latushka, Tikhanovska, and Tsapkala. When we want people to choose one, option. We see that the, uh, Viktor Babarika is in the lead, followed by Alexander Lukashenko. What's interesting, if we compare these two slides, see that in the first case, Lukashenko has 25%, and the second case is 23%, which shows that Alexander Lukashenko is, has a very consolidated voter group while well, people can choose uh, from different opponents of the current authorities like Babarika, Tchanovska and so on. People can choose other candidates. But at the same time, people who are uh, supporting the current government, the will only vote for one person, Alexander Lukashenko. Next question is, which of the listed people would you never vote for? It's like an anti-rating. We see that Alexander Lukashenko is the person who has a lot of an, a big anti-rating. If you look at the, uh, ask, 
Why Kachanova Karai Makei Karanik have a bigger rating is because they are known by the people who oppose the current authorities, the proponents know much less about the people who are present the current authorities except Alexander Lukashenko. It is worth noting here that Viktor Babarika is quite low and rating figure in the sense that only Maxim Znak and Maxim Bagratso have a lower rating in this sense because actually they're quite well known so people cannot imagine the situation where they would not vote for them because they know them which of the people listed do you trust or you don't trust we see here that uh, basically people trust most Alexander Lukashenko. It has to do with the fact that he is uh, most known compared to other candidates of the current system, current regime. Particularly interesting case is uh, Yuri Voskresensky, who is only trusted by 8% of people who know who he is. Here we see protest representatives who are trusted or not trusted. Maxim Znak is the top. It has to do with the fact that he is known by the fact that by people who support the protest, it explains his popularity. The trust index also shows this. The difference between trust in and in trust of politicians based on the share of respondents who know the person. We see the Maxim Znak, uh, Maxim Varzo and Pavel Serenis on the top because they're well known to the people who support the protest also. Maria Kalestikova, Latushka and Varika are known to Belarusians. The majority of Belarusians know them. At the same time, they have a high index of trust. And uh, we'll see that in the pro-regime column, The only person who has a minus two percent is Sergei Rumas, who is actually no longer president of the current system. So we put them, mark them, mark him with a special color, separate color. Next, it's the question about if you trust these organizations like regime institutions. Important point here is that what we saw in the poll is that compared to January, not a single organization out of those represented in pro government central independent sector, none of them had uh, the trust index going up. So some of them had it at the same level, others had it lower. So if we look at the anti leaders here, in terms of trust is the CEC and the pro-governmental media. The CEC is trusted by only 14% of the urban dwellers. State-owned media is trusted only by 17%. Among the trust leaders is the army. It is perceived as non-politicized body but we see that only 30% trust the army. 
to think of it, this is an awful figure because in the army, there is this state, the army has such a low figure of trust. Next slide is about uh, trust to the following organizations, independent on protest, pro-protest institutions. Here we see that in fact, they have more trust than the state ones. First, it's the independent media that has 46%, then goes Orthodox Church with 39%, and the independent human defense organizations. They have 38%. Actually, in January, we don't have figures for them because we didn't ask about them. So we only have the data from April. Next slide. These are the conclusions I think everyone can read. The conclusions on the slide, each of you has this presentation. This way it will be easier for you to again review the data that we have presented. Feel free to go back to this information at your convenience. We continue because my presentation is quite long. Next section is international relations. The first question, which of the following statements about Lukashenko do you agree with? We saw that the Belarusian society, a big part of it, uh, believes that uh, actually Lukashenko doesn't care about Belarusian independence, that he is the major obstacle for achieving political stability, and uh, he is trading in Belarusian independence. So you can see the figures 48, 47, and 47 percent. And he's also an obstacle of economic development. Next question is, what do you feel about the Poland countries? Belarusians uh, feel quite positive about all the countries. There are two exclusions, however, worth mentioning. Belarusians feel very well, very nice about Russia. So it's they're very positive, about 33 percent of them. And um, well, fifty percent uh, feel very positive or somewhat positive about you say, but it less than them about other countries. Next question is about how would you evaluate the following politicians' position on this world stage, where one is an outsider and seven is a world leader. We see the Alexander Lukashenko is closest to the outcast concept and uh, Angela Merkel is the closest to the world leader view. How do you assess the similarities between Belarusians and these nationalities in the mentality, character or culture where money three is very far apart and three is very close? Belarusians believe that Russians are closest to us, followed by Ukrainians, Poles, Lithuanians and Germans. It's the data that is simple to agree with, so they don't uh, really present a huge discovery. The next question is, how do you assess current relations between Russia and Belarus? As we can see, good and friendly, quite good and neighborly. More than 50% of urban dwellers called it uh, good and friendly and, and uh, quite good. There have been chains, changes since November 2020. Next question is, how have relations between Russia and Belarus changed over the last year? We saw here that more and more often Belarusians are saying that the relationship is getting better compared to there was in November and uh, 
more and more seldom I was saying that the relations are getting worse. Right, what position should Russia take regarding Belarus? Support the protest movement, support Lukashenko, refrain from interfering. You see that uh, support the protest and support Lukashenko is similar while refrain from interfering as the opinion shared by 58% of urban dwellers. There's a big number of uh, statements about Russia, ranging from total agree to totally disagree. I will not touch upon everything, but uh, I better touch it uh, during the Q&A session. But I will talk about two or three. The first is um, about 30% are saying that my opinion on the Russian government has changed since the support of Lukashenko in the political crisis. And uh, it's interesting, some uh, people say that Russia is the only support Lukashenko has. Only 8% disagree that uh, Lukashenko is the only su uh, support for Lukashenko. Despite all this, we see that I would move to the next point. It's number eight in the picture. Uh, only 22% of Belarusians support the uh, next point about the political partisan from Russia in the Russian parliament, I mean, openly pro-Russian. And next point here is the last in the slide. It is that I think that the Belarusian protests are aimed against Russia. In fact, Belarusians don't believe that. This is supported only by 18%. Next question is, which political union should Belarus be in? We have that 9% believe it's the EU. Russia says it's... 32, but about 46% would like to be in Russia and EU, together with Russia and the EU. And 13% believe that Belarus should stay outside any minutes. This actual share of is going down. It has to do with the fact that people uh, more of feeling that Belarus should remain open to other states and it's not capable of getting outside of the political crisis on its own. Next question is how do you feel about political union? In the bottom right corner, we see that the idea to join uh, the Russian is quite marginal. As to the question about uh, Vladimir Putin, we see that the majority of Belarusians feel very well about Vladimir Putin. At the same time, many believe that over the last several months, the attitude to him has gone worse. It has to do with the fact with how the Russian authorities treat the Belarusian crisis. Next question, how would you, how would Belarusian foreign policy change if a protest government came to power? How should it change? Interesting that in many ways, this idea that the Svetlana Tikhanovskaya government At least 48% believe that uh, 
would be related toward friendship and cooperation with both Western states and Russia. But at the same time, people feel that the program and movement uh, representatives of this movement have uh, an inclination to work more with the West. And uh, that's why 42% believe that if it would change, then it should be arranged towards friendship and cooperation with Western states. Next question. How will relations with Russia change if a properist government comes to power? We see here that, uh, in fact, only 12% of uh, urban dwellers believe that the situation will improve. We also asked the question, should Belarus stay in the CSTO or should it leave? They still become neutral. And third option that if Bill should join NATO and leave the CSTO, the majority of builders believe that it's better to stay inside the CSTO. But a lot of people believe that they should leave, we should leave and become neutral. The question about what will happen if pro protest forces come to power. We see here that Belarusian society still has a feeling that Belarusian program and movement uh, is leading towards the West. 45% say that Belarus will strive to enter the EU. 38% say that Russian military facilities will be withdrawn. And 37% believe that Belarus will conduct a pro European foreign policy, and so on. All these things are felt but more people than there are proponents of Alexander Lukashenko in Belarusian society. Yeah, yeah. We talk about the media component of the Belarusian government or propaganda, in other words. These uh, points that uh, are shared by 25% of Belarusians who support Lukashenko, that the uh, points like uh, the Russian language will disappear and monuments will be destroyed, things like that. These are the conclusions. I have actually mentioned everything. I'm sorry somebody decided to make a de redecoration of their flat on top of mine. So uh, you can hear them now. Right, the next section is about public sentiment. We ask people whether they agree or disagree with the following statements. The four statements are quite important for understanding. The first one is 32% the builders believe that they feel safe in Belarus. So the majority of the builders do not feel uh, safe in Belarus. Second point is two thirds of the builders in society believe that there is a severe economic crisis that will happen in the very near future. 25% believe that Belarus is coping well with the coronavirus pandemic. In, it's actually a number of people similar to proponents of the Lukashenko. Only 17 people, percent of people believe that their family's financial situation has improved while two thirds of Belarusians disagree. Next statement or question, which of these statements do you agree with? I will not name them all, but we see that two thirds of the Belarusian citizens believe that the, the authorities should have negotiations with people unhappy with the election results. Also a big number of people suppose the thesis that uh, point that uh, political all political prisoners must be immediately released. The interesting statement about um, Babarika 
that the charges against him are fair. Only 9% agree with that, which is smaller than the number of people who support Lukashenko, it, which means that even the, some proponents of Lukashenko believe that the charges against Beberica are unfair. We also asked the question, when will Lukashenko will step down as president or when he should step down? I'm uh, sorry about the noise. It's actually, yes, we can hear some sounds. Well, I'll be just speaking louder. I'll, after this press briefing, I'll go and ask the person some questions. So we asked the people, when will Kashenko step down and when should he step down? We saw there's a big demand in, among Belarusians for Lukashenko to step down. 40% believe that he should step down immediately. Some believe that he should step down in 2021. It's uh, half or more than half of those society. At the same time, on the left, we we'll see that the, the mood are much less optimistic. There's a big number of people believe that the Lukashenko will stay with us for a significant period of time. Next slide, please. What will happen if Lukashenko doesn't leave? What do Belarusians think? Two thirds are saying that talented people will leave or flee Belarus. Belarusians also believe that if Lukashenko stays, repression will continue, that Belarusians will depend on Russia even more. If we look at the replies, there are, we'll see there are no optimistic mood in Belarus if Lukashenko remains. Very few people believe that this economy will uh, become better and that the salaries and pensions will go up. Again, the numbers show that even supporters of Lukashenko believe that if he stays, the situation will not improve, at least some of them. Next, we ask the question, what do Belarusians think about the Belarusian protest? See here the following number of people who uh, have uh, a very positive or somewhat positive feeling. In the Belarusian society, there's a feeling that mass protests cannot lead to the results expected by the protest by the protesters. So it means that the more more skeptical about the protest against the current authorities. At the same time, the majority of Belarusians do support the protest demands. Two thirds say that the new fair election need be, needs to be conducted. That uh, there should be a fair investigation of violence against protesters. All political prisoners should be released, and the should be end of use of force against protesters. Few, few people support Lukashenko resignation, but on the other hand, we see the 25% who believe that Lukashenko should remain. Again, the number of uh, people here is similar to the number of Lukashenko proponents. Next question is, do you know the date of September 17th. This is a new state holiday, if anyone you don't know. This decision was passed not so long ago. Here we'll see a big number of various statements that people could agree or disagree with. In fact, September 17th is the date known by very few people. We see that only 18% of 
the urban population can answer the question what happened on that date in many ways it's uh, regionally connected people live in the brest and grodna region know more about that while people in magilov or gomil regions may know nothing at all about this date Right, uh, we saw that all the dates in Belarus that when you ask people happened on the 26th of April, people from Goma region uh, will say what happened with the 17th of September. It's not that clear and obvious. Next question was about the film by Stepan Potila. I don't know if we should name the name of the, the Telegram channel. So we asked them if people watched the movie Lukashenko Gold Mine. We saw that 40% of people saw it fully or some parts of it the same while uh, 27 and 36 36 percent totally trust or somewhat trust this film so we asked them to evaluate rate the movie on a scale from one to ten Belarusians gave it a 6.32 points last three questions about the gender topic the first one is about abortions you see that belarusians believe that two-thirds of them believe that abortions should be allowed in all cases or in most cases here belarusian society is quite liberal also we asked the question about uh, Um, opinion of Lukashenko that Belarusians are not ready to vote for a female as president. In fact, this opinion is fully shared or partially shared by uh, close to 25%. At the same time, we see that two thirds of Belarus society believe that Belarusian society is ready to vote for a female candidate to become the president of Belarus. The last question is wage inequality between women and women widespread in Belarus. We see that only a third of the Belarus society believe that this is a widespread problem or somehow or somewhat common. Here are some conclusions that you can read later. I think I've covered all these things. If you have some additional remarks, I'll be happy to answer your questions or add something. Here I have uh, the five most frequently asked questions about uh, Poland being politicized, about the methods, the sample size, computer system web interviews, and why we include rural populations only. Well, uh, I've actually spoken about 45 minutes. I think many of you would like to discuss something else. Thank you. Let's have a Q&A now. Olga Drindova has raised the hand. Yes, I would like to use the voice. I'm sorry about the camera. Thank you, Rehor. I have three questions uh, about the figures that actually surprised me. Maybe Rehor could explain the reason for them. The first is about the rating or the question who would you vote for if Lukashenko Barika 
I think there was only two people. Here you can see the fallen rating of both Poroshenko and Barika. In the previous ones, I think uh, they have over 30%, and now they have 20 something. How can this be explained? So, this, did people become disappointed in Babarika and Lukashenko? I think the fact that Babarika is in jail doing nothing. Um, I'm more surprised by the anti rating question of Tikhanovska. The question was the who would you never vote for, or something like that, as a president? And 40%. I don't know how how big this figure is, but I was surprised. Tikhanovsky has always said that uh, she will not um, aim to become the president, but at the same time, she is actually conducting political activities. So, uh, if it happens that she becomes the president, the proponents of the democratic change will not vote for her. Or what? How do you explain that? The third question. 40% again, it's the trust in the independent media, why it's so low, why it's going down. It's illogical for me. And we feel, uh, we see the wave of repression, the people are put into jail. So why such small numbers? I cannot explain that. Maybe you can explain this. Thank you very much. We'll start with Alexander Lukashenko. Basically, his rates and figures are not changing. We have been measuring the fourth wave. Since September, nothing has changed much about Lukashenko's support. It has to do with the fact that he mobilized all his voters or proponents. If we talk about the Viktor Babarika's rating, actually, nothing is really changing there as well. Uh, he has uh, he had a bigger figure of support it has to do with us not adjusting figures for education and now we are doing this but he still remains the most popular politician among the urban dwellers his rating is mythical in the sense that many belarusians are shifting part of the desire to live in the new belarus on Viktor Babarika. We talk about Svetlana Tikhanovskaya, why she has quite a big entry rating of 39%. She's well known. A lot of people voted for her, but many Belarusians there are people who support Lukashenko, will never vote for Tikhanovskaya. 25% and there are 15% of people who are skeptical, apolitical, and people who will not want representatives of the current protest movement to come to power. In many ways, many things that we see happening are not to the liking of Belarusians. Many of Belarusians would not like to have sanctions imposed in Belarus, currently mentioned often by Tikhanovska. And this fear is also that she is pro Western. These fears explain the rating now. The last question about the trust in uh, independent media I think it's quite a good result, big result, big figure. There are 40% who trust, and 38% of people who are undecided. Uh, we should understand that the people have different opinions about what independent media are. We have here the Charter 97 and the .by, so people have a very different understanding of this. We asked a general question about uh, the trust. I think 40% is quite a high figure. considering the 38% of people who are not sure. So I don't, I wouldn't think that this is an emergency for independent media. Peter Rutkowski is right in the chat that in 2018, the level of trust to non-state media was 16%. So there's a huge growth. 
Can I have a link to this information in the chat, if it's available? Uh, I'm quoting uh, Bardamaski, who said the, the, the ration when the media was 16 or 20 percent. I don't remember exactly. I agree with Peter is saying that there's a huge growth. At the same time, uh, there's a big decline in the pro governmental media. If we compare to 2017 or other, yes, I think uh, the situation was much different there. There's a question that you have partially answered to. The first question is, what do Belarusians are ready to agree to for this to end? Do Belarusians believe that Lukashenko is his system is staying for long? What is the different attitude to the protest? Do they believe that uh, it's better that there would be no protest? I think I've answered uh, the second, third and fourth question. This is an abstract question. We see that uh, why we're not measuring the readiness to the protest is that because the rep replies to this question are quite abstract. People can say that ready to protest, but they're not protesting. There are research by Levada Center and others, and they say that the number of people who claim that they're protesting and uh, want to protest is much smaller than the number of people who take to the streets. Any more? Well, the question that it's much, it uh, would be interesting to know about Belarusian's support for BISOL and other foundations. It could be, we could refer here to independent human defense organizations. And the trust to these organizations is quite high. Colleagues, any more questions? There are no questions. I think we can rock in, uh, uh, help you not <laughs> listen to our drill sound anymore. I have a question. But I uh, work in the Stefan Bator Foundation. I have a question about the readiness of people not in, getting included in the protest as such, but getting involved in the other activities. So, how ready are people to get engaged in the civil activities? And the second one is uh, the civil activity on the whole. So, how uh, it, people connect the civil activities with the political activities? in general. Thank you very much. I know that uh, our Belarusian organization, together with the People's Poll, currently actually poll in political parties and people's opinion about that. And these are questions that are connected to what 
we have in our research two things are important here. I think the majority of people are not ready yet. It has to do with two things. First is the fear. We see that one only third of Belarusians feel safe in Belarus currently. And the second point is that many Belarusians are at this point with the fact that they cannot get the result they would want to. We see that change in the protest uh, feel that understand that the result has not been achieved and they ask a question if the pro if the result is achievable through protest but uh, you they feel uh, that uh, the result of the repression hence comes the question If the majority of Belarusians are ready to participate in the public activities. On the other hand, we must understand that this figure now is several times bigger than we had uh, 15 months ago. It used to be very low. Now it's not that low, but it's not the majority yet. Thank you. The question from Nasty Krivosheva Radio Net. My question is about the figures about the su support for state media, which is quite low, but at the same time, number of people who would. Uh, support the state official is bigger. We see that state institutions have quite a small rating representatives of the institutions have a small rating. If we look at the trust index, the proportion between trust and mistrust, we'll see that in fact the supporters of current authorities have big trust issues. They're not trusted by of half of the population or uh, this proportion of people who trust them, mistrust them is big so the majority do not trust them which means that the possibility of them to get elected somewhere is quite low Um, they don't really believe there should be a replacement for Lukashenko worth voting for. Uh, Slankin European, Slankin European Council for Foreign Relations, the question from the chat. Considering the high anti rating of sanctions against those enterprises, how much the appeals of protest leaders affect their political rating. You didn't have this uh, question in the poll, but it would be great to know your opinion on this. I think that representatives of the democratic movement actually made almost all communication mistakes made by the so-called old opposition. That's why people call the new opposition the old opposition on steroids. It has to do with the fact that uh, uh, cannot actually urge for something because they're in the jail. All these communication mistakes have been made. There are sanctions regarding Belarus and economy. Also, 
protesters um, actually leaning towards the West. Also supported by the support for the white red white flag and the full ex total and acceptance of the white uh, red and green flag. So it affects the people who uh, call themselves apolitical, who say that they're not interested for this. This actually neg negatively affects the understanding of and the perception of the protest leaders. Thank you. Question from Andrei Sirenka. Is there a data about trust and mistrust of respondents to political parties? How political parties, how much are political parties and demand in Belarus? Again, I can promote uh, a poll about political parties of our colleagues. It will be published tomorrow. We don't have a similar research. But we saw that the grown interest, if we compare the interest uh, today and 15 months ago, there's a huge growth of interest. Uh, there are some limiting factors like fear and not not un lack of understanding to what it may lead will it lead to a particular person entering the party leading to a change in, in the government or people either say uh, have negative reply to this or don't are not sure so people th therefore are not ready to enter political parties in bulk in the current system, the level of fear is so high so that people are simply afraid that they can join a political party and this will lead to something. Any more questions? Artur Shreban once sent us a question sounded like how long will it last maria rogova have you analyzed the migration moods in your april polls we didn't analyze them directly but we asked the question if people are expect others leave in bulk due to repression I remember a question, what happens if Lukashenko leaves or stays? 60% believe that only people would leave Belarus or flee Belarus if he stays. We can ask the same question in the next wave of uh, research, but we see that migration moods are quite widespread in Belarus society. Thank you. Colleagues, any more questions, remarks or feedback? Tatiana Shitsova. Did you follow any discrepancies in the answers? due to the gender differences and age differences. Yes, we did. The presentation for 50 slide should not turn into 100 slide presentation. Therefore, I'll touch upon the most important things. Two things that contradict our understanding. The first 
is that, in fact, quite a big number of young people are apolitical. Our protest is in many ways a protest of people of middle age who are quite uh, grown up, don't have romantic views uh, of the, about the future. Well, young people, unfortunately, or fortunately, but that's the fact. That's a fact. The younger generation is mostly apolitical. As to the gender differences, what we see is that among the people who support the protest, male and female distribution is about 50 by 50 percent in terms of Lukashenko supporters it is 57 by 43 with female with more female support on Lukashenko unfortunately anyone else I guess nobody else wants to hear any knock, knock, knock sounds. I'm sorry for that. This was totally unexpected for me. I didn't have anything like that happening in the past. Well, fine, I see there are no more questions. I would like to thank you for the presentation. I'd like to thank everyone who got registered, asked questions, listened to us and was watching us.